we will go to a summary of what we st uh, studied last uh, week. Um, let's from verse number one to number six. So let's read this responsibly. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they built, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. And cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that we have uh, just read. Thank you, Lord, uh, for this time, that uh, this uh, blessed opportunity, dear Lord, to once again go into your word and study, dear Lord, and look at uh, principles that we can apply in our lives. I pray, Lord, that as we uh, go through this, uh, this passage, I pray that you help us, dear Lord. Uh, to uh, see truths that are in it and not only see them uh, but Lord uh, agree with what, it, what it's saying and be humble enough dear Lord to be corrected by your word I pray Lord that you help me as I preach may I be uh, may, may I be able to be a blessing to the people dear Lord I pray that the Holy Spirit will work freely in our midst and uh, convict hearts uh, this morning and that we'll be able to glorify your name uh, in this endeavor dear Lord may you be the one to be glorified in our midst for these things I pray in his name Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. So last week, we uh, looked at verses number 1, 2, and 3 of chapter 4. And we're now at our sixth uh, message here. But as, uh, as a way of um, a review, last week we looked at what was the first thing that the enemies uh, of, of, of Nehemiah and the workers, the builders of the wall faced. And the first thing that they did was they offered ridicule. They gave them, uh, they ridiculed them. They, uh, uh, what they call this, and we learned last week that this is usually the first thing that the enemy will do to Christians or to people who wants to work for the Lord because first it's easy. It's easy to ridicule. You just have to be creative with your adjectives and creative with your mocking and all of these things. And people, and for people, especially for the enemy, this is easy to do. You just have to, uh, 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 ridicule them and another thing we saw that the reason another reason why they do this first is simply because it works on a lot of people it's not just that it's easy to do but it also works on a lot of people and we saw last week that it works because there are people who are doing the work of the Lord and are still very conscious of what people think about what they're doing they're very conscious. They, they don't want people to say anything bad about them. They don't want to hear this ridicule uh, being thrown at them. And the reason why is this is a form of pride. A form of pride that they don't want uh, uh, any negative stuff thrown at them. And they forget that the work of the Lord is all about God. It's not about them. Because if we put ourselves aside and we put our mind uh, into something that I'm just obeying what the Lord is saying, I'm just doing what God told me to do, and what they're saying is actually directed towards God and not me. And it's not about me. It's not about what they think of me. It's about will I faithfully do the work of the Lord? And if I'm sure that I'm, what I'm doing is what the Lord called me to do, then ridicule should not matter. All right, but we should guard our hearts. If we get affected because of this ridicule and especially ridiculous things they tr throw at us, then that means we see ourselves as a, a very important part of what we're doing, but we're just instruments being used by God. And another thing is we saw that ridicule is usually a substitute for argument, especially when people, they don't know what to say anymore, and they don't have a valid, especially valid biblical argument against what you're doing, they just start to ridicule you, hoping to delay your process, hoping to slow you down, okay? But we saw that uh, this, and today we're going to see how Nehemiah and the workers responded uh, uh, to this thing. 
we also saw last week that we should not be surprised by ridicule because in the New Testament we learned that it is told uh, uh, it has been told to us Pe uh, the Bible told us that people are going to mock us people are going to mock our faith they're gonna ask us where is this a uh, 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 second coming you keep on preaching about this until now it's not happening and they're gonna laugh at us they're gonna mock us but it is we have been warned and we can prepare for that by first putting ourselves aside uh, and 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 uh, putting the work of God in the, uh, 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 ahead of us. Now, we we see that also in the life of Noah. Uh, if if someone was faced with ridicule day in and day out, it was him. But he knows that what he's doing is just obeying the Lord, and he just keeps on obeying the Lord. Doesn't matter what people say, and that should be our attitude as well. So now we go. We we come here to verse number four, and um, today uh, we're not going to stay long. We'll just go until verse number. Six, because uh, we only have until before ten. Okay, so let's go straight in. Verse number four it says here, "Here, O our God, for we are despised and turn the reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity." We see here that Nehemiah, upon hearing of these things that uh, Sanballat and Tobiah and their friends are are, are, are saying or, or, or uh, uh, saying about them or against them. They didn't respond of uh, they didn't start by responding of a clever way of getting back at them. They didn't send back the ridicule of their own. They didn't even confront them personally. What they did and and, and all of these responses uh, if if they're faced with ridicule and if they give ridicule back or they think of a clever response, all of these things if they did that would have made the enemy victorious. Why? Because it would have delayed the work. Okay, they would have had to come down and talk to them and deal with them personally and putting aside the work and eventually delaying the work. When we are faced with ridicule, the goal of the enemy is to, to get us to stop what we're doing, however long that may be, and get us to battle the wrong battles. To, to go down and battle the battle that is not given to us by the Lord. Because what's given to us by the Lord is to do His work. And Nehemiah, he was called for a specific purpose to build the wall. And uh, together with the workers, if they turned aside and, 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 and then got out of their way, went down and talked to these people and, and had, a, had a meeting about what to do with them, then they would have been victorious. They would have slowed down the work and maybe eventually in that process get them to stop working altogether. But Nehemiah, as his manner was, he prayed. Upon hearing that, he prayed. And we see this as a theme in his life. Every time he gets a burden, every time he hears something, every time that he wants to do something, the very first response of Nehemiah was prayer. He prays to the Lord. Starting in, verse, uh, in chapter 1, we, we, when he, when, uh, the time that he heard about the burden was happening in Jerusalem, he prayed to the Lord. He waited and keep, kept on praying for months before even doing something about it. Waiting for the Lord to open a door or to open opportunity for him to do something about it. But he kept on praying. And he did and his response here is exactly the same. He heard the ridicule, he heard what they were saying, and instead of doing something about it on his own, he prayed and asked the Lord for help. And this is a very wise move. Why? Because it is the Lord who can do something about it. Amen. You can do something about it. All right, you can respond. You can uh, what they call this. You can uh, uh, think of a clever way uh, uh, to to get back at them or to para bang makabawe. But that is not what the Lord has called you to do. The Bible says in Romans twelve nineteen, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. The Bible says the business of vengeance or avenging ourselves is the business of the Lord. It's not our business. And if we will make it our own personal business to uh, get back at everyone who's ridiculing us, get back of every, uh, uh, on everyone who is uh, mocking us, then we will just have uh, spent our lives doing that. And we would have wasted our lives doing that. The Bible says it is the Lord's business. It is His prerogative if He will uh, 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 avenge us or how He will avenge us, or when He will avenge us. Our job is to give it all to the Lord, to pray to the Lord. And, and, and we, again, we can be smart, we can argue back, we can, be, we can show them that we're so much better, we're so much smarter than them, well, we, we know the Bible more than them, but then we would have just wasted our time doing that. Okay, so now look at Nehemiah's prayer. Going back to verse number 4, Hear, O our God, he prayed, for we are despised. 
and turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity and cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Now Nehemiah is asking God not to let these things go unpunished. He's asking God to do that. Now, not, not, not asking God to, Lord, let them experience what they're saying to us. Let them in return experience what they have done to us so that they will know what, uh, what's happening. Because the Bible is clear that what, whatever you're doing, whatsoever you sow, you, you will reap. Verse number, uh, chap Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 9 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap of flesh corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Remember Nehemiah said, Lord, turn their reproach upon their own head. Okay, now let them sow what they are saying. Let them sow what they are reaping. And this is a principle of the Lord. That whatever you sow, you shall reap. And he, the verse that we just read in Galatians chapter 6, this is first and foremost an encouragement to the workers. Encouragement to the believers that if we keep on doing what's right, if we keep on working for the Lord, the Lord is not unjust to forget that work. And we shall reap that someday. But this is also a warning for people who are sowing iniquity. The Bible says in Job chapter 4, verse 8, Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Hosea 8, verse 7 says, For, that, for they have sown in the wind, and they shall reap the uh, whirlwind. It hath no stock, but the bud shall yield no milk. For, it be, for, so, for if so it yield, be its yield, the stranger shall swallow it up. Proverbs 26, 27 says, Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. Proverbs 28, 10, I'll just read this verse, says, Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an even, evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. Now, we don't only sow, uh, uh, reap good things that we sow, but even the bad things that we do, Eventually, we will reap them. There are consequences. So Nehemiah is asking God, Lord, please turn the reproach upon their own heads. Now, they're, they're planning uh, bad things about us. They're, they're planning for us to fail. Now, Lord, let them fail in return. Now, Nehemiah is saying this to the Lord. Remember, he's not doing anything about it. He was just praying. Now, the Bible is clear that those who devise iniquity in their hearts will reap the same. That's why we should also be careful because not only the unbelievers do this. And, and, and if we have a vengeful heart, if we have a vengeful attitude, we can also be a person who devise bad things uh, to happen to our brethren and to happen to other people. And the Bible is clear that if you are someone who do that, you are going to reap the consequences. Some, uh, uh, now, Nehemiah, let's read, a, read his prayer again. Verse number 4 and, and 5 says here, turn the reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. Verse number 5, and cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee for they have provoked thee to anger and uh, to anger before the builders. Now, looking at this prayer, this seems like a very violent prayer. This seems like, uh, uh, this, this, this may get you thinking, should we at all pray like this? To pray for the mischief of wicked people. When in the book of Psalms, we see a lot of this kind of prayer. Uh, if Psalms 58.6 says, uh, if, if, if we could go to that, uh, Milka. Psalm 58.6 says, Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Psalm 69.25, it says, Let their habitation be desolate, and let none dwell in their tents. And this is a biblical prayer. If you pray that, not out of a vengeful heart, personally but it is good to pray this because we know that the work of the Lord is being blasphemed because the work of the Lord is being mocked because the glory of the Lord here is is what they are what they are mocking and not us personally okay um, but we, should, we if we pray this out of anger we pray this out of a vengeful heart then I believe that that is when it's wrong okay now it seems like reading this verse it seems like Nehemiah had something to say after all like he had a lot of things to say. Now, now uh, it, again, this is, uh, this is a prayer that's okay because he's not directing this to the people, 
but he's directing it to God. It's good to vent it, to vent to the Lord, but not to people who are mocking you. Because if you go out of your way, go to them and say that, I'll break your teeth. All right, I'll break your teeth in your mouth. Uh, I, I'm praying that you'll die. Then what's the purpose of that? Now, Nehemiah is venting towards the Lord. Lord, please do something about this. Now, we, we, we learned uh, a few preachings ago that Nehemiah is good at, uh, uh, in his one, one good trait of his leadership is he knows how to delegate work. But then now he's faced with this problem. He's delegating it to the Lord. And that is very smart. If we are placed, uh, faced with uh, uh, consequences and uh, consequences, uh, uh, what they call this, uh, hindrances, a lot of these things while we're doing the work of the Lord, we just give it back to the Lord. And we just give it to the Lord because the Lord had promised us that uh, if we have any burden, if we are, if we are even, uh, what they call this, uh, burdened with something, that we give it to the Lord because He cares for us. Now, until and unless we give it to the Lord, and, until, uh, and, and as, as long as we're using our own flesh, as long as we're using our own might to do something about it, then we're hindering uh, the work of the Lord towards these things. And not to mention the fact that we are delaying, uh, delaying the work of God. Now, Nehemiah ended his prayer by saying, For they have provoked thee to anger. Right? Now, Nehemiah acknowledges that this is God's cause. And it is God's glory that they are going against. It's not about Him. Now, Lord, they have provoked you to anger. Lord, they're doing this against you. Lord, they, they're saying this against you. It's not about us. Okay, now when Nehemiah, is, uh, no, no, Nehemiah here is praying, he's asking God, Lord, please help us in this situation. Because he knows that this mockery, these things that they're doing can affect the builders can affect the workers and later uh, and later maybe in the next preaching we saw that encouragement will start to creep in because of these things and the enemy will not start ridiculing you or mocking you if he doesn't know that it works and and and, and for 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 a, for a very long time starting here in the old testament until now the enemy is doing this why because it's worked over and over and over again it's worked because we fail to respond properly. It's worked because we fail to respond in the biblical way. We fail to give it to the Lord. We fail to ask the Lord on what to do. And most of the times, when we ask the Lord about what to do in this situation, the Lord does nothing at all with them. But the Lord works in you instead. Now, the Lord works in your heart and in your attitude instead. Because uh, if, we, if we see here, after Nehemiah prayed, the situation didn't get better. It will actually get even worse if you read the rest of the chapters. They didn't just mock, then they started to plan to hurt them, to harm them, to fight for them. It seems that the situation got even worse. But verse 6 says here, So built we the wall, and the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had the mind to work. This is, the resp this is God's uh, uh, answer to their prayer. He didn't do anything about the enemy. He didn't God could have just killed them. Now, many times in the Old Testament, when, whenever uh, there are people going against the Lord, He can just kill them. I mean, you use, use, uh, uh, use violence as well and, and, and uh, uh, use the people of God to do something about it. But instead, God worked in the mind and the hearts of the people. Because the, the Bible says here uh, that, that they were able to join together unto the half thereof for the people had a mind to work. Remember, before this, there, are numer there were numerous uh, attempts to build a wall. And, and every time that they attempted, they were faced with ridicule, they stopped. They were faced with opposition, they stopped. And this time, Nehemiah prayed and asked wisdom from the Lord. And the Lord answered by giving the people a mind to work uh, uh, so that they can, uh, what they call this, put their hearts and mind into working and not mind all these things. And, and with no time at all, they were able to build half of the wall. And this is a great encouragement to them because something was happening. No, by praying, Nehemiah's anger first was diffused. Now, he might have been affected, but when he prayed to the Lord, if we're affected, we pray to the Lord. We notice that after giving it to the Lord, it's out of our hearts. It's not there anymore. We don't desire to do anything violent anymore. Why? Because we vented it to the Lord. We asked the Lord. We prayed to Him. Now, it, we, we saw over and over again that whenever we're praying, people of God praying in the Bible, the, wor the Lord works in them instead working on the of working on the circumstances. Because if we pray and the Lord changes the circumstances every time, it's just like it, nothing has first, nothing happened to us. 
All right, no, we didn't get better. We didn't have a better attitude. And, and it, it might somehow spoil us, right? But whenever we pray, the Lord changes something about us. Let's, let's look at some examples of, of these uh, kinds of prayer. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 12 to 18. It says here, this Hannah praying to the Lord. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Okay, now Hannah had been praying for a child. Okay, we know, we know the story behind this. And she has been praying fervently to the Lord, repeatedly. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. Now she was praying so fervently that she was mistaken to be drunk. Okay, and Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured my soul before the Lord. Now, Hannah here is praying. Now, this is a sample of biblical prayer, a prayer that is pouring your heart and soul to the Lord. Okay, not just a, not just a prayer that uh, most of us, whenever we pray for something, we pray for it once and then never pray for it ever again. Right? But the biblical prayer is you really want something from the Lord, you pray for it. Just like Nehemiah, he did this as well. Over and over again for months until the Lord answered his prayer. Verse number 16 says, Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Now we see the word there, hitherto. That means that Hannah was praying for a long time. Hannah has been praying for this for quite a while. Now she said that I have been praying like this until now. Right? Now, what is, the, what is the response of Eli? Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee, grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat. And look at this. Her countenance was no more sad. Now it changed her. She was not yet pregnant during this time. Eli just said that God will answer your prayer. But in the process of praying and praying and asking God, God changed her attitude towards this instead. Now, we know eventually uh, she was, she's going to, get, uh, uh, to, to have a child, but what changed first was her, her attitude. Her countenance was no more sad. Okay? She, uh, God changed her attitude. Uh, we, we can see this. Uh, what, uh, the, the Bible says in Matthew 11, 28 to 29, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And we are so blessed. We have a God who is merciful and gracious that we can go to Him and ask Him the things that we want and even things that are troubling us. Give it to Him and He will take care of it. He might not change the situation, but He will definitely change you. How many times have we started praying for something and the moment that we get an answer for that, we compare, the, we compare our first prayer to the moment that we prayed and get an answer for it, it's a completely different prayer. Because God slowly changes you and changes your prayer instead and aligning that to the will of God. Now most of the times we are put in a situation like Nehemiah, we're put, put in circumstances that are very difficult in order to be able to make us better. In order, in order to, to uh, uh, for our own sake, okay, for our own attitude, for our own character to be molded, okay, so that when we pray to the Lord, God will help us do that. Now, another example of uh, a great uh, this kind of prayer is Acts chapter four, verse twenty-nine. Yesterday, I believe we uh, we we tackled this a bit. And now, Lord, now, uh, now, the, now the apostles are praying. Now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants what that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Now we know what was happening here. People were threatening them. They were, were, go, they were be going to be put in prison and freed and put back in prison. And people were saying, stop preaching. But then they did not ask for the Lord to change the situation. Because it's there. The, threat, the threats are there. They didn't pray, Lord, please remove the threats. Lord, please remove these people. Lord, please remove this obstacle. But instead they prayed that, Lord, grant us boldness to preach thy word. So instead of praying for the Lord to change the circumstances, we, we might as well pray that the Lord will change our attitude towards the circumstances. Because if God just keeps changing our circumstances, we're not going to be better. We're not going to be better and we're going to be spoiled. Now if the Lord, uh, if the Lord gives us this kind of answer to our prayer, then we should rejoice. If the circumstances are still there. And even if the circumstances become worse, 
as what will happen to Nehemiah and the builders. We should rejoice and be exceeding glad. Why? Because our attitude have changed towards it. At first, we were affected. At first, maybe we were having trouble. But after praying, after giving it to the Lord, we see that, hey, it's not so bad after all. It's not so bad after all. The Lord has shown me that these things are necessary. Remember, uh, yes, la last week we learned that uh, for the work of the Lord to, 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 to what they call this, to be uh, done quickly, uh, what, uh, what they call this, and fervently, opposition has to happen. Because without opposition, we're not going to keep relying on the Lord. We're not going to rely on Him. We're just going to rely on our own might and our own power and our own uh, intellect. And if there is opposition, there are things that are seemingly impossible, then that's when we rely on the Lord. That's why the Lord allows these things to happen so that we rely on Him, we pray, and that God will work in us instead of working on the circumstances. Now, um, as we continue to uh, look at this, prayer... Again, going back to what, what we have been studying a while ago, prayer should be the first thing we do when we are faced with discouragement. Prayer should be the first thing. It's not the last thing. Now, uh, when, when we started, and, and anyway, we're going to have our conference, Contending for the Faith. When we started, uh, when we decided, pray to the Lord, decided to uh, uh, study the Word of God and, and place our, our previous uh, beliefs and place it against the Word of God. And God started to slowly change this and slowly correct this and as God gives us grace to humble ourselves and be corrected by the word of God we knew that things are not going to be easy things are going to be harder from that point on we lost friends we lost all of these things but we learned in the process that we can do the right thing and still be wrong by not asking wisdom from the Lord because the first time that we faced I, personally at least I'm speaking for myself the first time that we faced, I faced ridicule and personal attacks, I did not pray to the Lord. What did I do? I threw it back at them. I threw it, and and in, in the process, I got discouraged. In the process, I got uh, sidetracked. And then I, I actually thought about, uh, is this even worth it? It's really hard. It's difficult. Why? It will really be hard and difficult if you're not asking God to help you. Yeah. If you're not relying on His power. Because if, if it's only you against all of these people who are mocking you, you stand no chance. Yeah. But if you ask God to do something about it and He changes your attitude towards it, then you will see that it's even more lighter. It's, it doesn't matter at all. So the first thing that we should do is to pray. Give it to God. Lord, you know what they're doing. Lord, you know what they're saying. Lord, you know what to do. Help me face this. That, is, that, is, that should be the attitude. And that should not be a last resort. After trying to argue with them, debate with them, all of these things, and then you pray, what's the point of doing that, right? The first thing is to pray. Now let God, as you pray, through your prayer, do the work of changing your attitude towards the situation that is burning you, uh, burdening you. Let the Lord do that work. Don't pray with the mindset of, Lord, do this lord do that for me lord do this and if you do this lord then it will just everything will just be better no as we pray we should have this humble attitude and humble uh character to let the lord do what he wants towards the prayer that we're asking him for and most of the time the lord will not answer it the way that we think he will and it never is the case in the bible whenever people are praying to god the lord answers it in a way that they have not thought of why because if god does it in a way that you thought of pride can just come in your life just just like yesterday we were uh we were uh studying about all these things and social injustice and all of these things if we pray and ask god lord help us with these uh rallies and all these things and god did do that and 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 and, and uh, we did achieve it through that through what we are praying about then we'll just say oh wait the lord took my advice the Lord took what I said, and I think that's a good thing. Next time, I don't have to pray because I already know what to do, right? But the Lord answers in such a different way. When, when the church was praying for Peter when he was in prison, what, what happened? The Lord answered in, different, in, in, a much, in a way that they didn't even expect. That when the Lord answered their prayer, they could not believe it, right? Uh, uh, Peter was knocking on the door, and they said, oh, I should, it, it couldn't be him. Right? The Lord could not have answered this quickly. But then, the Lord does this so that we know and we do not mistake that it is the work of the Lord. Amen. 
That's why when we pray, allow the Lord to change us. Allow the Lord to answer the prayer the way He wants to. So that we will bring back the glory to the Lord. After praying, the next thing is after praying and giving our burden to God, continue doing the work. Continue doing what God has called you to do. Okay, do not delay the work. Why? The, uh, we, we have read a while ago in verse 6 that after praying, they got back to the work. Nehemiah got back to the work. And as a result, they were able to build unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. If we pray and ask God, God will give us that mind to work. To, to, to have that attitude of just keep working. Keep working no matter what. Because this is what the Lord, uh, Lord, will, uh, 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 the Lord has called us to do. And during, during the next preaching, we will see. I, I, I wanted to include the next few verses, but I believe time will not allow us to finish that. But we will see that things didn't get better. And encar a discouragement will start to creep into the people. Because the enemy will not just stop at mocking. The enemy will take it up a notch. And take it up another notch. And see where you're going to break. And see where you're going to get discouraged. And, and that's the reason why another argument for praying. Why? Because as we pray, no matter if the enemy will take it up and, 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 and just really even hurt us physically, we can still, if our attitude have already changed, it will not matter at all. Amen. Why? Because our attitude, God already changed our heart. God already gave us a, the mind to know and understand and realize that it's, a, it's my work, it's my calling, that is my purpose. I am just using it as an instrument. It doesn't matter what they do to the instrument. As long as the mastermind of that work is still working through us, God, uh, God can still do great things in us. That's why keep relying on God. Put yourself out of the equation. It's not about you. It's never about you. It's always about God. They mock you, they're doing it against God. They hurt you, they're doing it against God. And we tell our Heavenly Father, Lord, you see what they're doing? Break their teeth. Um, just, just joke. Now, just say that, Lord, you know what to do. Hey, this, is your, this is your job. This is, your, this is what you said. This is your promise. You will avenge us. It's not our work. Lord, don't give me that vengeful heart. Again, you can get angry, but anger in the Bible is not necessarily sin as long as it's anger, a holy anger. Anger because people are hurting the work of God. Okay, anger is only, uh, what they call this, justified if you are angry because of the work of the Lord. Not personal grudges, not, 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 not personal anger, but when we're angry, even if we did get angry, we vent it to the Lord. Give it to Him, and the Lord will, will, will work on that. And I hope and I pray that we see this. This is a, a reoccurring theme from, the cha from chapter 1 here until chapter 4. A theme that Nehemiah and the Lord wants us to see here, that prayer works. It always works. It, it works in ways that we don't think it will work. And it works in ways that will make us better. And, and, and if Nehemiah is a great example of a person who relies on the Lord. Who relies on the Lord's wisdom. Relies on the Lord's strength. And relies on what the Lord wants him to do. And before he even does anything about it, he makes sure that he kneels down. He prays to the Lord and asks wisdom from the Lord. Something that we should learn in our lives. It's easy to say that. But it's hard to do. Because the moment we're faced with these things, prayer doesn't come into mind. It never does. It always says, what can I do? Plan about it. Do something logical. Uh, look, uh, even look at the Bible. But hey, pray first. Pray. And God will lead us, uh, will guide our steps and guide our minds and give us wisdom in, in doing these things. So we'll end here and, uh, um, uh, and we'll have another preaching later. And... Um, Hopefully, you'll be able to preach in the next, again, three or in the next month. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. For